For those of people who are unaware, could you give a bit of an overview of what you do? Uh, I'm Johan, I make games. <laughs> uh, I work, well, I'm a creative director at Products Development Studio. I've been doing a lot of diff the different games. Yes. I'm working on them. Most recently, I was the game director for Imperator Rome. Okay. And currently, technically, our game director there. <laughs> I mean, uh, you got a lot of feedback during the pre-release Dev Diaries. How much of an impact did it have on the release version of the game? A lot. A lot of the, like, we always look at what people have feedback for, and then we adapt and change. So uh, the, the problem with the pre-release feedback is that it's not measurable in a great way. Because a lot of people that comment about something... Uh, it's usually this amount of people. Yes. It's the, what usually makes up for a good good metric to see is more like are people playing or not. Right. It's the best way. To okay. Uh, it's fair to say Imperator's launch wasn't the smoothest. Quite a negative response from the community. Yeah. What was the feeling out within the team when the reviews of, from players started coming in? God. Uh, and I think it's the most proper word people like. But I think the first response or first reaction was like, we made a game. We told everyone exactly what the game was going to be. We didn't lie about which features or how they should work. We always like exactly the game. And we released the game. It was working exactly as designed. Uh, we were honest about what it was going to be. It was technically, besides the stuttering issue the first few days, there was no major bugs in that says we were like why don't they like it? This is exactly the game we promised to make, kind of like. So we were like sad and baffled, and then uh, was like, okay, are we? Do we not understand our target audience? What what lessons did we take wrong from previous games, and how do we adapt? So. Me and Peter and Niels and the rest were like, okay, so what do we change? We had already started doing the plans for uh, Pompeii. I keep misremembering names, but <laughs> that. the first one was like, okay, we knew that the naval game was weak because we had not designed to change as much from uh, the previous game around. Rome. Um, and we've not, uh, so we were like, okay, we have to strengthen the naval game. And that was like, sometimes like a few weeks before release of us or like a month before release when it was first it's like okay I know how we can do concerts and uh, co-rulers and such so let's get that one in and then we added a bunch of other cool stuff like I think we added volcanoes because it was something that we wanted so it's like Pompey had a lot of the stuff we wanted to get in and then we then the responses were even more negative during the development so we're like okay shit we have to redesign about this stuff or, I mean, it wasn't as if the game was a... But, okay, how do I put it? The launch was bad from a player satisfaction thing. From a financial standpoint, it was a superb success. So from a critical standpoint, it was a superb success. So if we had not been Paradox, we would have been like, oh yeah, oh fine, we have we have made a nice profit. The game will probably sell nicely at the sales and tick on, but... You don't build this stuff up by ignoring customers. So we're like, okay, this is the game we made. The promise of it is not what the community uh, liked or wanted out of a Paradox game set in the Roman time period. So we went back through and uh, listened to a lot of uh, feedback. Um, uh, I read some, and I'm I I walk a lot. Uh, I've been losing a lot of weight last year, so when I walk, I listen to a lot of podcasts and YouTubes. And uh, you know uh, which YouTube I listen to every single news uh, there it is. I listen to your channel. Every <laughs> single thing you uh, post about for importers is like listen to yours and Republic of Play and what's the one. The one that, there was someone else that made a lot of like news things early on, so we listening to all those feedback things uh, every time they come out, and reading the forums, and I read Reddit, and 
I don't read Steam reviews and I don't read Steam forums. I don't blame they you. Are, uh, not exactly the best source of information. Yeah, I can agree with that one. And then uh, we had after this, like, uh, the removal of mana was, uh, I don't want to use the word trivial, but it's like, okay, how do we, how do we remove it? How, what do we replace with? Then Niels, our tech lead, had uh, uh, reworked uh, uh, a currency system internally, like, so we could put a lot of things as currencies. So I put in, uh, we put in stability, war exhaustion, so we okay, let's, I don't know if you remember, but I posted something about for 1.1 that we can, or one, before we did the mono removal, like, okay, we're going to make it so that everyone can just replace whatever they yes. want and pay and the animation mods will take care of it. And then I thought, like, uh, the political influence, it's... Okay, we're gonna solve it. We're gonna do this, and I wrote the dev diary. Yeah. Just posted it up during the weekend. Then it's like the rest of the is like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, well, I've coded it. It's gonna get in, and it's gonna go out. No, we can't get it into uh, uh, Pompeii. You have to be later. It's too late to get the um, right. producer and technically got super stressed about making me turn to new And then like, okay, we have that one in, but that's not enough. Uh, there's like removing a mana, political influence, uh, it's a logical system and it's rather helpful, but the, the military tradition was a really big challenge for a while, it's like, how do we do it? And then we'll, I thought like, okay, let's just do, how experience is your army, let's it or be impacted at, and then war exhaustion and mercenary relies, whatever we did as factor, and that will work out nicely for uh, getting the traditions. Uh, so we we had got that one in, and then I'm realizing like, okay, what else is the description of the stuff we're doing in the game, and what I thought the community would rather like? Oh yeah, direct actions are not really what the players want. Uh, while I thought there was a great uh, game balance mechanical design thing to have like either the long-term conversion or the short-term conversion because you have to think like either short-term it's a direct cost it's a mechanically great thing it doesn't thematically immersiveness or whatever you want to call it work that great so that's why we reworked the entire pop system with my uh, uh, first we did I did promotion and uh, Demotion, because you couldn't even have the No, the motion com came a little bit later because we didn't actually you couldn't demote the pops I did in Congress. So it was something we added in during that one, and then we were like, okay, we're gonna have migration and all of those things. So we had like the pops being gradual, and it was a hell to balance early. Even in the first beta, it was it changed so much during all the betas. And, uh, and then we put things out in open beta and then a lot of people during July they were like off on holidays except me and Peter Nicholson uh, our hero on the firms we basically go okay we're gonna add this one we're gonna add this stuff and he so he basically he made the food system and sit sit this and that thing I made all the buildings changes and I can't remember what else we had we just kept adding stuff <laughs> As soon as we could. It was great for my channel. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but it's like it was. It was kind of fun. So we we did that one, and then the, it's like in late July, early August, the main team swapped off from working on Kikaro and started working on the core for Lily because the big bulk of that one is a lot of UX stuff. I don't know. Have you seen that one yet? I've played a bit of yeah. it. Yeah. So it's like a lot of UX and also the new mission system, which is super powerful, and we'll be able to create a lot of stores with that, that one in the future, uh, with the organically procedural. So that took a lot of time for them. Um, me and Peter's been working on other stuff, and I've been. I did a supply system. Yes. Which I explained in a dev diary. Two weeks, three weeks, I can't remember. I think it was two weeks, yeah. Yeah, and it, that's been kind of fun. So it's like we try to do... Because it's like the supply system is completely different than something we've done before. But it's going to be really, really fun to see how people react to that one.
Yeah. Okay, I keep rambling. I just no. keep talking. Hey, no, that's perfect for me. <laughs> um, so what's the strategy to get people who were less than enthused with the release version? What's the strategy to get them back playing again? I know marketing people can probably uh, figure out a good way to get people to, back to try stuff. But I think from a development standpoint, uh, we should just keep working and working with word of mouth. Of like, okay, we keep doing new updates, keep doing new things. Like when Kikoro, we didn't do any major marketing activity around Kikoro, but still the daily active users was five times as large or something, and the peak of current users were up. I think it's around 2k now. Yeah. I haven't looked at it for a week, so it's. But then we, when I don't know when Libby goes into open beta. I hope we're doing it. That was the original plan. Are you confirming that there is going to be an open beta for Libby? No, I said that's the plan. It's, mm. it's up to the producers, etc., to see how we handle and so on. Because we actually need to be able to get feedback and act on the feedback and be able to get a new version. Because uh, one of the challenges with Imperator is that it's no longer just selling on one platform. Yet we're having the game um, Game Pass, which is one of these things. Like Imperator is pretty big on Game Pass. You don't see all the people with a Steam concurrent users. It's right. a Steam, and for our other games, 99.9% .9 of all customers are playing with Steam version because it's an older. But for us. Steam is much much smaller on on this one. Okay. It's not 99.99 percent, but it's the others are significant thing. It's like maybe I've got and the Plaza version, and they're all different. So, but yeah, again, rambling. What was my point? My point. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, there, there, there will be ways to get the players back, and I think like having those. Um, regular updates, doing patches uh, regularly are uh, something that's going to be really good for, uh, for us to get the playbase back up again. Right. Well, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'll uh, skip a few questions. No, you just keep going. You've, it's like... <laughs> you've been at Paradox for quite a while at this point, and the lead on many games, as you said. Yeah. Um, one can reasonably assume Imperator won't be the last, so what lessons or experience will you take from Imperita into your next big project? Uh, listen a little bit more earlier, try to figure out what the community sentiments are, work a little bit more with user research to aspects and I don't know, it's going to be a while until I start a new game because I have to look over old projects and so on and Henrik needs a bunch of support now with the free soon so and yeah we'll, we'll see it's but uh, there will be more games but currently uh, Imperator is my main concern good uh, I like that answer yeah. <laughs> um, what would you do with Imperator given like carte blanche all the money or time that you needed what's what's your vision I would like to have uh, missions for pretty much every major nation I would like to have uh, add in the religion me mechanics for all religions. I would like to have uh, uh, different cultural things. I would like to have uh, more uh, more events, more historical or different regional narratives. I would like to uh, go around the different mechanics and make them deeper. Uh, I don't want to make expansions. I want to make content packs because I really, really don't like the situation we have arrived at with EU, as an example, where a bunch of features are tied to an expansion, and then you can't go back and remove and rework. It limits the design quite a lot. Because I, like, I want to be able to do things like uh, Slurs did with uh, removing uh, different uh, travel methods and I want to do stuff like remove mana uh, I, uh, not remove mana again because we remove mana but you know the thing is like you, I want to be able to do drastic changes if the game needs it so it's a little bit for um, uh, uh, for how to do it alright lovely okay um, what mechanic or feature are you most proud of an imperator yes uh, like I like the combat uh, algorithms and systems with like because it's super complex 
and not complicated. Yes. If you know what I mean, it's like you have all these different unit types that are uh, good at uh, versus different types. You can have a lot of super simulation of how to fight, and then you have the tactics, etc. But it's very few choices you actually make regularly with them. So it's a uh, from a nerdy game developer perspective, I like when I can make something that's complex but not complicated. Lovely. Uh, but from other perspectives, I like how the pop uh, management uh, system uh, turned out for Kikera. Yeah. Uh, a, a final thing is like, uh, I've been saying like, I think Imperator was a good game at release, and a standby, it was a good game at release, it was not a good PDS game. Right. That's the distinction that I think uh, I learned. There was. Because the reviewers that reviewed the game, uh, the Rex critics, they gave it a high score because it's a good game, but it's not a good game for the PDS community. Yeah. We have high standards. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you expect uh, different things and so on, but it's turn the game's turning out pretty good. No. I would definitely agree with that. Thank you. Anyway, thank you very much for the interview, and I hope I can get another chance to talk yeah. again. Yeah. Cool. Grab me over a beer in tonight or so because I'm around all day. Absolutely.